Hey, what's up? In this episode, we're gonna talk about verifying a user's identity using Stripe Identity. You're watching part 23 of ClearBNB. We're building a short-term vacation rental marketplace using Ruby on Rails. We're using Tailwind and uh, a whole bunch of different technologies. But today we're gonna go through and verify the user's identity. So Stripe has this product called Stripe Identity. Um, it's basically this way that you can you know, collect documents and verify identities. And so there's a couple different ways to do it. They have, um, or we have, you have, they have. <laughs> There's a modal flow and there is a redirect based flow. So the modal flow would be something where we have like, you know, a modal pops up in the UI and they can go through the process of collecting the documents directly in the UI. There's also a redirect based flow, which is kind of like Stripe checkout, uh, which we're already using in the product. So I want to use the redirect based flow. I, th I like it uh, and I think it's a little bit easier to use and it ends up offloading all of the front end work, like writing all the JavaScript and everything directly to Stripe. So we're just gonna use the redirect based flow today. And the way that it's gonna work is that when someone goes to a listing and they want to uh, book some property, when they click on reserve, right now what we're doing is ensuring that they're logged in. <laughs> uh, and then once they're logged in, um, when they get to this page, I don't even wanna let them see Actually, yeah, we want to let them see this page because they, maybe they don't even want to book because of the dates. So maybe when they click on reserve, before we let them reserve, we'll check to see, do they have a identity that has been verified? And if they have a verified identity, then we'll let them continue on to pay for their booking. So this is in the reservations controller. And when they are going through to create a brand new reservation, the first thing we wanna do is check to see, like check to see if the user's identity is verified. And the whole point of this is to uh, give hosts a little bit of peace of mind that the guests that are gonna come stay with them have a verified identity and they're not just, you know, someone who's gonna come in their house and uh, you know some some stranger that um, doesn't have any I don't know uh, they're on the lam or something I don't know <laughs> maybe they're a bank robber I don't know um, so we just want to make sure that we have an identity verification and we know exactly who is coming as the guest we also want to do it on the host side but we're sort of depending on the um, the Stripe Connect onboarding on that side uh, in order to verify the host, which we do uh, we do require onboarding through Stripe Connect for our hosts in order to receive payment and such. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna see like um, if current user dot, I don't know, um, identity verified, uh, or if it's not verified, then we wanna like, um, we wanna redirect to uh, redirect through the identity verification flow. So in order to track whether their identity is verified or not, we need some field in the database. So Rails G migration add identity verified to users. And that's gonna say something like identity verified, verified, and it's gonna be a Boolean and false, I don't know, is that gonna let me create a field with all of that special stuff? Yeah, okay, That's it's not the index, it's the default value, and let's see. So we're gonna come in here and default to false. So all users by default have not had their identities verified. We'll migrate the database, and then we're gonna pop open that, um, yeah, so back to the reservation controller and inside of the reservation controller, when we're creating this, um, when we're creating this reservation, what we want to do is we want to push the user through the identity verification flow. So the way this works is we create a verification session, and then we redirect to that URL. So the type of uh, identity verification we're going to do today is document verification. Um, we'll put in the user's ID. So this is just going to be current user ID. Um, is there anything else that we might want to check here? Uh, I don't know, like, yeah, that's probably good. Like uh, for now, we're gonna be able to respond to webhook notifications about different steps of the verification process. So we'll know when the user's identity is verified, we'll be able to look them up based on the metadata that is stored in this verification session. But before we get too far, let's just take a look at the API ref for this and see what else we could pass in. 
So you can verify documents or you can also identify, like do uh, ID numbers, a social security number, things like that. We can also like require that, you know, they have to use a passport or a driver's license or things like that. Um, okay, and then finally, we want to pass in a return URL. I'm so okay, yep, so we wanna pass in a return URL and that's gonna be the URL to which we want to redirect the user back to after they complete the verification process. And that URL is gonna be the URL that we're currently on right now. And I'm wondering if we wanna like somehow include the check-in and check-out dates when we come back. I don't know. We'll keep it simple for now, but yeah, in the future we might wanna do something fancy. Um, but let's see. So this is gonna be the, the new reservation um, URL, and we wanna include the listing ID in the query string param. Now, I don't know if we're passing the listing ID as a inside of the reservation params, we are. Okay, so notice that we have a hidden field here that has the listing ID, 26. And that is also like, it's originally when the new form is loaded, we're passing it at the top level params, but when the form is submitted, it's gonna be submitted in reservation params. So I think we can come over here and say something like reservation params listing ID. And then here we wanna redirect to the verification session URL. And because this is a, another host, we have to say like allow other hosts true and status is uh, see other. And if we are doing identity verification here, we want to return early. So we're just gonna like add a little early return because we don't actually wanna book the listing if, uh, yeah, if we need to go through verification. So the next step is that we also need to know when we have completed identity verification or like the, the whole process. So let's go take a look at these. Um, so that's the redirect flow, blah, blah, blah. We go through the redirect flow. And after we are done with the flow, we want to call, actually, what do we, what is this JavaScript for? Oh, that is just a, uh, yeah, okay, um, okay. And test the redirect, blah, blah, blah. Okay, handle verification events. So if their identity is verified, this is the event type that we're gonna receive, identity verification session dot verified. So we'll go over to our webhook handler. And again, this is um, every time we receive a webhook, it's being handled by an event job. So we can go into the event job. Every time we have an event that's a Stripe event, we're calling handle Stripe. So inside of handle Stripe, we're gonna add a new thing in here. So we're gonna say something like when, um, Let's, what was it again? <laughs> Identity verification session verified. So when the verification session is verified, we wanna look up the user. So the session is gonna be like event.data object. That's the verification session. And we're gonna find the user by their ID. So user.find, yeah, find by ID. We wanna use find by in this case because we don't want it to raise an exception um, because uh, we don't want our webhook handler to return a 404 in the case that for some reason the session that came back in the webhook handler did not have the metadata with the user ID in it. Um, so yeah, there's two alternatives here, right? You can say like user.find and then just try to pass in the ID like that. But if there's, a f if, um, if there's no user found and we're using this method, by default the controller is going to respond with... Um, a 404, actually, you know what? It shouldn't matter because we're in a background job. Yeah, we're in a background job, so it shouldn't matter, but whatever. And now we can say like, if uh, user.nil raise, there's no user found with that ID. Um, otherwise, what we wanna do is we want to say user.update identity verified as true. And on this verification session verified event, it's gonna return, or it's gonna like send us a verification session which, um, let's see, Verific verification session. I don't know why it's in dark mode. I didn't, I don't think I turned that on. <laughs> okay, so verification session is gonna have all of this fun stuff. Uh, if there was an error, it'll have that verification session error and then it'll have this status of verified. So we can also like double check that, but when we receive this event, it should be, it should be verified. But we'll just be careful and we'll say if 
session.status is verified, then update the user's um, identity to verified. Uh, otherwise, we'll set it to not verified. I don't know. That, should, that shouldn't happen. Um, okay. What other event types were there here? Requires input. That's going to be like a step where the user needs a little bit more information before they can be fully verified. And in our case, we're just going to, every time they try to book, we'll just push them through the verification flow again. So if we come back over to clear BNB and attempt to book now, we have our webhook handler is up and listening. So we should be able to, I think we're going to get kicked out or like not kicked out, but we should uh, be sort of blocked here from attempting to book these dates because our identity is not verified. So from the 11th to the 12th, when we click on reserve, we should get redirected through the identity verification flow. And we did, awesome. So this is the, um, the identity verification process. Uh, we're gonna go through like this test success thing eventually, but if we wanna just preview the experience, we can proceed and then we can say, complete it on the mobile device and that'll let us go on sort of on our phone and try to take a picture of some, uh, some identification or we can say get started and we'll say like take a picture with your webcam and let's say it's a driver's license. Um, okay, very good, accept and continue. Now we need to allow our camera and I don't know if the camera is gonna freak out because of uh, the, <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna freak out because I'm recording at the same time, but whatever, we'll see. So then if we say continue, now let's pretend like this is my ID <laughs> and uh, it's gonna say, um, so it's, you'll notice like at the bottom here, it says place the front of the ID document above this thing. It's capturing the image, but it's not a real ID. This is a remote control. <laughs> so I don't wanna show you my real ID because of people and uh, yeah. so. Whatever, we're just gonna say try again and then use other options, upload images. You can upload images too, that's like another option. But um, let's actually go all the way back to um, verification success. So we're just gonna submit the, this is in test mode, we can just say like it was successful. Um, and so we'll say submit and we should receive a webhook. So we should have received, uh, identify. okay, here we go. Identity verification session verified. And if we look in here, if we look at the Rails console, um, we should see, which user was this? What are we logged in as? I don't know. Uh, Reservation.last. Uh, oh no, it's not gonna be, right, okay. So then we have to go back to clear BNB. And now we have to repick those same dates. But um, yeah, I don't know. verification are verified true. Hey, there is a verified, okay. So this one has a verified identity. That's fantastic. All right, so now if we come back in here and we say um, book from, I don't know, what was it 11th to the 12th of April? It's like right around my anniversary and we'll say reserve. Now we have a verified identity. We're being redirected through the checkout flow. So now we're gonna like go pay for this booking. And I don't know, maybe we're gonna go somewhere super fun. That would be cool. Uh, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, blah, 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 test, 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 book. Sweet. And it's processing, it's processing. Um, oh, also <laughs> we have it set up so that it's gonna send us emails and text messages and all, all kinds of notifications letting us know that it's all set up and ready to go. So that was pretty quick and pretty straightforward. I haven't done this in, uh, in a little while. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how quickly that went. We have now a reserved reservation and we have a verified identity for the guest before they arrive. And that totally checks off this box. I'm just gonna say that um, we'll save background check, phone number check for another, um, another time, maybe an exercise for the reader. But honestly, I'm feeling like we might actually be done building this out. Like I'm feeling pretty confident. If there's any like really major, major features that you wanna see or other kinds of tools that you wanna use with Rails, please let me know. I'm gonna add them to a list for another series. This one is getting a little bit tired. This is part like 23 or something of the series. So we'll keep, we'll keep doing Rails stuff. We'll keep doing uh, things with Ruby and JavaScript, but I wanna mix it up a little bit and start working on another project. So um, yeah, let me know what kinds of features you are trying to add to your Rails applications and we'll see if we can fit them in and make some content about it. 
So uh, thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you so much for all of your time and attention. This has been really fun to build out. I know it's like not fully complete. The intention was never to like actually launch this as a real proper thing, but it was to go through and really exercise a bunch of different muscles in terms of what kinds of um, things we're doing. So it's got, you know, listings. We can add listings, remove listings. We're dropping pins on a Google Maps. We can look at uh, reservations here. We can book reservations. We can sign up as hosts. We have listings that we can create. Um, we've got address auto completion with stimulus JS. We're using Tailwind. It's, it's got like a pretty, it's, it was pretty fun to build this out. So um, yeah, thanks so much if you've been sticking around this whole time, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, if you haven't already connected, I would love to chat with you on Twitter at cjavdev. And otherwise, yeah, thanks again so much for your time and attention, and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.